Hey guys, Cam here from Pocket Lint and Samsung's Galaxy S20 has been around for a couple of weeks now. We've been digging into it and found a few things in the software to help you improve your experience or find little tips that you maybe didn't know were there. So let's dive straight in. So a part of these tips is just about making the phone a little bit less Samsung-y and first up is making the power button a power button again. So by default when you press and hold the key on the side it launches Bigsby. So you can either leave it as it is and power the phone down by sliding down the quick setting shade and tapping the power icon there, or go to the side button settings from that screen and then change the function of the side button so that when you long press it, it powers down the phone as it should. Next is turning on Android gesture navigation. So again, by default, Samsung likes to employ its classic navigation buttons on the bottom of the screen. But if you can go to settings, display, navigation bar, you can now choose full screen gestures, so you can just swipe on the screen to go home, go back, or reach the multitasking view. Number three is getting more apps on your home screen. So if you long press the wallpaper on your home screen and now tap home screen settings, you'll see an option to change the layout and number of rows and columns of apps. Choose this home screen grid option and then select the layout you want. I personally quite like the 5x6 because icons tend to look a bit too big otherwise, but that's just my personal preference. Next is rotating your home screen to landscape. So another home screen tip is allowing you to work in landscape mode rather than lock to portrait. Head to settings and home screen settings and then switch on rotate to landscape mode. Now when you rotate the phone horizontally, the layout of your home screen will rotate as well. Number five is switching off Samsung Daily. So to the left of your home screen is a feed called Samsung Daily. It's full of all kinds of feeds from news, media and other services, but personally I found it mostly full of nonsense. So to switch it off, long press the wallpaper on your home screen and then swipe to the right. Now you'll see a toggle switch to turn Samsung Daily off. Number six is swiping down anywhere for notifications. So go back to your home screen settings by long pressing the wallpaper and then tap the home screen settings option. Now choose swipe down for notification panel. And now your notifications will drop down when you swipe down anywhere on the home screen. Next is to see all apps on your home screen. So if you'd rather have all your apps on your home screen and not tucked away in a drawer, you can access this option in the home screen settings again. Just choose home screen layout and then select home screen only and all your apps will be spread across all the home screens rather than in the app drawer. Now if you are using the app drawer you can alphabetize your apps and this is our next tip. So open the app drawer and then tap on the little dots in the corner to open the menu. Now tap sort and you can choose alphabetical order and your apps will automatically sort themselves out. Our next tip is tapping the screen to show the fingerprint scanner while the screen is off. Now you can have the fingerprint icon illuminate by tapping the phone so you know where it is to unlock it. So head into settings, biometrics and security and then fingerprints. Type in your pin or password and then head to show icon when screen is off. You can then opt to tap the screen and the fingerprint icon will appear showing where to press. Our next tip is enabling that 120Hz refresh rate. So by default, Samsung's display is set to 60Hz. But if you want high refresh rate for ultra smooth animations, head to settings, display, motion smoothness. Now choose 120 hertz. Now it'll only let you choose this if you're at full HD resolution, not at its highest resolution. Which brings us quite nicely onto the next tip, which is enabling full quad HD resolution. Again, by default, Samsung sets the screen resolution to full HD, which is actually fine if you're on the smaller S20, but on the Plus and Ultra, you might want a sharper experience. Go to settings, display, screen resolution, and then choose WQHD Plus. Again, it won't let you have this resolution if you have 120 Hertz switched on at the same time. So if you do have it switched on, it'll automatically switch off the higher refresh rate as soon as you choose this higher resolution. Sticking with the display for one last tip and it's dark mode. So to enable full dark mode, just go back to your display settings and then tap on the dark mode toggle. To schedule it, you can hit dark mode settings and then choose to have it come on automatically at sunset or use your own custom schedule. Up next is hiding that front camera. Now Samsung's made the front camera cut out tiny, but if you'd rather hide it behind a fake bezel, you can do that. Head into settings, display and full screen apps. Open the menu in the top to reveal the advanced settings. Here you'll find a toggle option to hide the front camera. Switch it on and it'll look like it isn't even there. 
Two quick camera tips for you to finish this off, and one of them is turning on shot suggestion mode in camera. Now this is a feature introduced on the S10. It analyzes the scene and then suggests the best composition. The camera will suggest the best shot you can take and help you line it up using a guide on the screen. So open the camera in photo mode and tap the settings cog at the top, and you'll find the option to turn on there. And lastly, record video in 8K. So open the camera app and head into the video mode, Tap the little aspect ratio icon and you'll see an option for 16 by 9 8K. Select this and now you're shooting an 8K. So that's been all our tips for this video to get you started. For a much more in-depth guide, head over to pocketlint.com where you'll find a much longer written guide featuring pretty much everything you could hope to find. If you did like this video, hit that thumbs up and subscribe so you can see more of them. I've been Cam, I'm at Cam Bunton on social media, so follow me on Instagram and Twitter and all the other important social media networks. I'll see you again soon.